Welcome to our lecture online, and this is a very interesting part of nuclear physics, is our ability to date rocks using the radioactive decay process. Let's say, for example, that we find a rock, and we determine that it contains potassium-40, which is a radioactive form or isotope of potassium. Now, potassium-40 can decay in two ways, actually in three ways, but primarily in two ways. One of the ways is that it ejects a beta particle, and therefore turns potassium into calcium because one of the neutrons will eject a, an electron, which is called a beta particle, and turn itself into a proton and thus becoming calcium. That process will happen 89.28% of the time. Sometimes, however, a potassium will capture an electron and turn a proton into a neutron. So instead of having 19 protons, it now only has 18 protons, so therefore turning it into argon, which is, of course, a noble gas. That happens 10.72% of the time. Since we understand that, and knowing that the half-life of potassium-40 is 1.28 times 10 to the 9 years, which is 1.28 billion years, a billion and 280 million years, then if we find a rock and we can chemically analyze to see how much of the argon is in the rock and how much potassium-40 is in the rock, we can therefore determine how much of the potassium already has decayed. And the way that works is when the rock is first formed from a molten state, the uh, argon gas cannot have been present because it's a gas that will gas out during the uh, process of it being molten. And so then when the rock hardens, it is then assumed not to have any argon in it. So whatever argon we'll find in the rock now was purely formed after the rock has solidified. So by using the ratio of how much argon is, the argon is there, and by also figuring out how much potassium is there, and knowing these ratios of how that forms, we can then, for example, say that we found a rock and we determined through a process of chemical analysis that 70% of the original uh, potassium is remaining. So if that's the case, let's make it into a problem, then find the age of this rock. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so the way to do that, of course, is to say that N remaining, the amount of potassium remaining, is equal to the amount of potassium we started with times E to the minus lambda over T, of course, lambda being the decay constant. So let's find out what the decay constant is using the half-life. And so we can say that the decay constant for, for potassium is equal to 0 0.693 divided by the, um, the half-life, T sub 1 half. So it's equal to 0 0.693 divided by 1.28 times 10 to the 9th years. Okay, so that's a very long half-life. So we can expect to find a very small decay constant. So 0 0.693 divided by 1.28 e to the ninth equals, and so that would be equal to 5.414, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, 5.414 times 10 to the minus 10 per year. All right, now we plug that in here. Now before I actually plug it in, let me work it out in terms of the decay constant and then find, and then plug it in later because that makes it a lot easier to write. So the amount we have is 7 point, 0 0.7 times the original amount, because that's 70% of the original amount, equals the original amount times e to the minus lambda times t. And of course, we can cancel out the n sub naught on both sides, take the natural log of what's left, so the natural log of 0 0.7 equals the natural log of e to the minus lambda times t. Of course, we have the natural log of 0 0.7 equals, this negates the e, and we get minus lambda times t. And then solving that for t, we get t is equal to the natural log of 0 0.7 divided by minus lambda. And now we'll go ahead and plug in the lambda. So let me write it over here. So we have the time is equal to the natural log of 0 0.7 divided by minus the decay constant, so minus 5.414 times 10 to the minus 10 per year, and that will give us t in years. So we'll take the inverse of that, and then multiplying that times 0.7, take the natural log of that, equals, and t is equal to 640, uh, 659 million years. So 659 million years years. 
And that's how we find the age of rocks that contain the radioactive element uh, potassium, potassium-40. So pretty interesting. So that, that's why, since carbon-14 only can date fossils out to maybe 40, 50,000 years max, and let's say we find a fossil of something that's hundreds of million years old, if we can find it embedded in a layer that contains um, rocks that contain potassium-40 and also contain the, uh, the noble gas argon, and we can chemically determine the ratios, we might be able to find the age of the rock and therefore surmise the age of the fossils that we find within the layer that contains that rock. So pretty interesting stuff, and this is how you do that.